Итак, всем привет, дорогие друзья! Сегодня вы узнаете в этом видео нечто невероятное. Я думаю, кто в курсе уже знают и наслышан, что совсем скоро заканчивается этап особого рынка, когда биткоин в скором времени приобретет коррекцию и будет естественно падать в цене. И все инвестора, люди, которые владеющие огромнейшей долей биткоина будут продавать его. И тем самым многие инвесторы перейдут в альткоин, в этот рынок. И тогда, дорогие друзья, осталось уже совсем немного, произойдет памп очень многих криптовалют. По неким моим ожиданиям, Вичейн, XRP, Трон и Кардана будут иметь повышение в 200%. 300 процентов вы думаете что это просто детский сад я вам скажу что однако это не так если вы хотите упустить этот самый момент вы можете закрыть это видео и заниматься своими делами дальше однако я вам этого делать не советую лично я приобрел 5 криптовалют которые сейчас находятся в топ 10 и Уверен на 110%, что в скором времени будет огромнейшее повышение стоимости. Мои вложения в 1000 долларов окупят мои ожидания. Я намерен выйти из рынка, когда уже закончится сезон альткоинов, не менее суммы в 3000 долларов. И будет самая великая спущение, когда криптовалюты будут продаваться, падать в цене, и этот срок может занять больше года. И когда вы нащупаете момент покупки, через определенное количество этого времени, вы сможете покупать криптовалюту по очень низкой и выгодной для вас стоимости. Здесь и состоит стратегия, чтобы на конце медвежьего рынка Приобрести криптовалюту, получить эти самые 200-300%, продать ее и переждать. Ни в коем случае в нисходящем тренде я вам не советую входить в рынок. Вы имеете все шансы слить свои заработанные деньги. Поэтому вам для размышления топ-10 криптовалют альткоинов. В том числе и эфириум, который легко, по моим ожиданиям, сможет вырасти до отметки в 6 тысяч долларов уже в этом году. Принимать решение исключительно вам. Ну а теперь, пока, до скорых встреч, друзья. It's, it's interesting, in the United States, uh, what, what, uh, the, the value of the dollar since I was born has declined by 94% to 6 cents. Uh, so inflation that they're relatively unfamiliar with or, or new, uh, and, and it's just an interesting activity, uh, being a financial regulator and, and, and sitting in your, in your chair. So, I mean, when you think about the, the technology and, and the challenges that poses, how do you go about the business of identifying and keeping your eye out for the risks, again, not just in the, or associated with the, with the product, but with the technology itself as it becomes either commoditized or infiltrates the traditional um, financial marketplace? Well, I, you know, again, we're for innovation, so really in, in, in more mature areas like use of the cloud or artificial intelligence, there continues to be challenges of how regulators look at those things. You know, does the cloud represent a higher degree of cyber risk? Uh, you know, is, is uh, artificial intelligence, uh, if, if you use it, do you uh, perhaps violate concepts of fair lending or disparate impact that are concepts the CFPB has. So all these are questions that really need to be solved. So I consider that kind of the, the crypto is kind of the new, new thing. The core fintech are, are sort of established process that have gotten to some stage of maturity.
but still need uh, increased level of maturity for regulation. So that's why in that report, we kind of separated the two. One, we weren't finished with the digital asset work, so we weren't ready to publish on it. And two, uh, those reports were Treasury recommendations. They weren't interagency, so we did sort of make an effort of triangulating with other uh, regulators, but they were really our thoughts. We had the pen. So that's, you know, so really the uh, uh, excluding digital assets from that report is just a matter of, you know, if that report was a year from now, you know, it would have been integrated. But I do think it's important to look at the nature of fintech, and these are fairly traditional, uh, uh, addressing fairly traditional financial services needs. It's sort of, a, 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 in some ways, a disruptive marketing technique. It can be a disruptive credit analysis technique. Uh, speed to market innovation can be quicker. But it's largely sort of overlapping with what we would all consider traditional financial services. Crypto, digital, blockchain technology is like a whole other step. So I guess the first thing is to get the first phase right. And I think we put out a framework that we're moving forward on. I think on digital. There's a, so three to five years is tricky. If you said 30 years, I think I'd give you a more accurate uh, vision. I think three to five years has a lot of dependencies on does our economy reopen in the next six months? What happens with the presidential election? What happens with China on various uh, immediate issues of, of uh, national sure. security? So, what, but what I would say is if you kind of assume a steady state on all of those things, what I think will happen is three to five years from now, I think banks will be connecting to blockchains the same way that they connect to uh, SWIFT and ACH and other networks. Right. Once they do that, the nature of banking will begin to change because while banking will always, I, I believe, be the key on-ramp and the key value add service provider yeah. to people, people's financial services lives, they will not be the bottleneck of the transaction of financial services. Instead, they will be nodes on a network along with a lot of other nodes, many of which won't yeah. be banks. And that will really change, I think, and allow banks to focus on what they're best at and what we really need them to do. So I think that will happen for sure. I do think that in a world of geopolitical instability, crypto assets in general will grow and become a more significant part of people's lives. That's one of the reasons why you know, I believe Bitcoin prices are going up in an environment of perceived instability is people yeah. start to believe that the sovereigns are you know, maybe not yeah. as trustworthy as they once were. Bitcoin is not generated by any sovereign. Maybe that's a thing to hang on to. So I think you'll see more of that. But over time, you know, the world tends toward more um, sort of uh, stability, right? Things reach equilibrium. And so since decentralized things are more stable than centralized things, I would predict that the movement that started 200 years ago with the First Bank of the United States, a movement toward more decentralization, will continue. Banks will adapt to that. They will add value to that. And, uh, and the world will go on. But it will go on in a cheaper, faster, more accessible way than it has before. And that'll be through the good work of, of people like you. So that'll be my view. It's awesome. The money movement continues. Uh, appropriate for, uh, for XRP. There's a lawsuit hanging over Ripple right now. A group of uh, people are saying that XRP and Ripple are sort of tied together and that they, you know, XRP could consider it an unregistered security. Um, what would you say to them? Well, it, it's pending litigation, so I'll probably be a little bit uh you know, muted on the topic. Uh, suffice it to say, 